Hi, this week I'll be looking at specific actions you can take to dramatically reduce the effects of noise overfitting when performing your trading optimizations. Without taking these actions, you risk parameter selection being ineffective with potentially disastrous consequences for your real money account. To illustrate this, I'll be using one of my own systems that I actively trade in the live markets. It's a system that I know has a great edge and has been very profitable for me for many years. Using this system, I'll be undertaking two separate optimizations. One that optimizes using best practice to produce robust parameter values, and one that intentionally over-optimizes to illustrate the point. And I'm sure that you'll be surprised at just how easy it is to over-optimize this system and completely destroy the system's ability to make money. I'm hoping you'll find the conclusions are a real eye-opener for your own processes. Hi, and welcome back. Last week, we looked at the techniques you can use to reduce the effects of economic news events overfitting. This week, we turn our attention to a different, but maybe even more important aspect of overfitting, noise overfitting. And importantly, I'll be giving you practical steps you can take to dramatically reduce its effects. I'm in contact with traders every day, and I see many of them making the same mistake again and again. Sometimes even experienced, successful traders make this mistake, but usually to a much lesser degree. And this leads to noise overfitting, but in reality it's a relatively simple thing to solve. Now, I say it's relatively simple to resolve, because the actual actions you need to take can be done very quickly. However, the problem is a psychological one. The reason for this is that the actions required are the exact opposite of what many traders believe about the optimization process and how it should be performed. And that's because it goes against the inbuilt beliefs up here in the head that traders have based on their intuition and also much of the incorrect information that's prevalent across the internet. So I'm going to show you a real optimization example today that will illustrate just how easy it is to rectify and how much difference it can make. Okay, so where does noise, this component of price action that we're trying to avoid, fit into the overall picture of price action? Well, I consider there to be three main components of price action. The first is deterministic price movements. The second is stochastic price movements. And then thirdly, we have noise. Deterministic price movements are those that have an element of predictability. Of course, you still need to make sure you have the right inputs to make those predictions. And if you do, you'll be able to predict where price, the dependent variable, will go based on your independent variables, being either indicators, pattern recognition, previous price action, or maybe even machine learning techniques. And if you can do that successfully, there's a deterministic relationship. And this is the kind of price action that algo traders generally target with their strategies. Stochastic price action, on the other hand, is completely different. This is where the system incorporates randomness into the price action. And because it's random, future price action due to this component can't be predicted in the same way as deterministic components. And we saw in a previous episode the huge impact that randomness can have in optimizations. It's the element that makes it so difficult to extract the best parameters from the process. But we have to live with this because it's a fact of life, so you need to get used to it and you need to learn how to work around it. And then finally, we have noise. This is all of the more minor price movements that are caused by thousands of different trading actions occurring in the system every second. From the aggregation of trading actions from the smallest retail traders to HFT trading institutions to the largest trading houses across the globe. And this combination of trade executions tends to cause a huge amount of short-term chatter in the price action that we call noise. Again, this is also predominantly stochastic or random from the perspective of an external observer of the system. It isn't usually something that an algo trader would 
target with their trading system. I say that this appears random from the perspective of an external observer of the system, but of course, if you had all of the data about every trade execution that was about to occur, then even this has an element of very short-term determinism. But generally, this is again another component that you need to live with, or rather learn how to handle, which is of course the topic of this session. Now these three different components are all in play at the same time. So in this chart, for every time, t, all of the three components will have influenced what's just happened in the price and also determine where the price will go next. But the ratio of individual influences of these components can change over time. So here, for example, on the left hand side of the chart, we can see that the dominant component is the deterministic price movement. We can see the nice solid directional impulse waves, each followed by pullbacks and then further advancement with additional impulses, and the pattern repeats. The price action appears to have purpose and it knows where it's going. We then have periods that look more like a typical random walk behavior. And this is where the stochastic components are more dominant. And throughout all of this, noise is always playing a part in the price action. Sometimes the other two components cease to play as big a part and we're left with mainly noise in the price action. Now, if you have a particular interest in the inner workings of financial time series like this, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at the Darwin X Quant R&D series, where one of my colleagues, Erith, is producing a whole series on the subject. He'll cover the makeup of price action to a much deeper level than I'm doing here by dissecting the inner workings of financial time series and also look at modeling of different market regimes. So as I say, if you have a particular interest in this, then be sure to check that out. Now back to noise overfitting. This occurs when our optimization process is allowed to give too much relevance to the noise components because of the way that we've designed the process. This is at the expense of being able to focus on the more predictable deterministic price behavior that we really should be targeting. This is of course then negatively influencing the selection of the best parameters. So click here now to go to part 6.2, where I cover the design principles you need to use to make sure you avoid this happening.